me see. Okay, I think I've been enabled. Let me just give me a minute and let me see if I can share my screen. All right. So that's my profile that has been shared already. So let's keep that. So I'll try in this presentation to look at financial markets introduction, financial market subclassifications. We will see what is money market, capital market, primary and secondary markets as we go along. Then we will just do like a slide on regulation because financial market without regulation uh, is virtually uh, virtually a fraudulent market because because financial market that deals with money, they are also elements who are always looking for opportunities to to dupe people in the financial market. So financial market it cannot exist properly without a proper form of regulation. So we also touch briefly on key institutions that have been charged with the responsibility of regulating our financial market to ensure that that integrity and protection is available in that market. So let's start with financial markets. Uh, I'm speaking with students. I believe I don't have to be Cherika with you guys because I'm sure there are some of you who may have studied financial markets already. Uh, but for the benefit of those who may not have, whose courses are not financial and accounting inclined and so may not know what financial market is about. Uh, so what is financial market? I believe that whenever you hear financial market, you should not think so hard. Just think about the concept of a market, any market at all that you look, and you ask yourself, what does market provide? What is a market? A market is a place you go to look for something to buy. And it's also a place you go to look for, you go to look for opportunity to sell. So basically, a market provides the platform, a system that provides buyers and sellers the means to treat. And so when you add the word finance to it, then it means that financial market is a place, a platform, a system where sellers and buyers need to treat financial assets and products. So whereas on a normal market, you need to treat some form of commodity, which can be tomatoes, watermelon, or whatever. In financial market, you need to treat financial instrument or products. And as we go along, we will know what kind of financial instrument or products uh, you are likely to see in a financial market to sell or buy. Okay. The other key point I also need to make is that they are what they are they are what we call the surplus units and the deficit units. So generally in this world, there are people who have excess and there are people who lack. So the people who have excess are called the surplus units, and the people who are, who lack are the people we call the deficit units. So basically, what the market does is to link these two people, the people who have excess and the people who have needs, so that they meet together and exchange. So the people who have surplus will give to the people who have needs on some conditions. So basically, that is what this is about. Surplus units and deficit units coming together to trade. And that's what financial market does, sitting between uh, these two people to make sure that they treat at what we call a fair price. And when we say a fair price, you are talking about a price that is agreed by the both parties independently without any form of undue duress. In some parlance, we will say they trade at arm's length, arm's length. So just to make sure that this picture is clear in your mind, uh, look at what is on your screen. This is, this is a market where we see that the, for instance, financial markets, on the, on the left side, we have corporations. On the right side, we have institutions or fund managers. We call them the buy side. And then there's intermediaries sitting in the middle. That is the market. So there will be one, one company makes so much money. They have assets sitting on in their bank accounts. There's another company that did not make much, made losses. And so it's looking for cash to augment their business operation. Those two entities will now meet in the market. And then the other company that has surplus will give some funds to the other company that has deficits at a rate that is generally called the interest rates or returns or whatever. So that the guy that has a deficit can have money to run his operation. And the guy that has excess money can also be able to let go part of his money at some return. And that's what financial markets does. does. It can apply to individuals as we're going to the same place to do the same things. As we go along, these things will be clear. And the, the kind of products, and when you come to that market and you need to do the exchange, 
there are various ways that can be done. You, you either give your money in the form of bonds or you give your money in the form of shares. Hello, sir. Market. Yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Your slides are not moving. So, please, which one are you seeing? We are seeing the first page Understanding of Operation of Capital Market and Fund Management. That's the first page we are seeing. Okay, because as I speak, I am on um, slide six. That has that is structure of the financial market players. Um, I don't know what I can do about that. Okay, I think have it's you, coming now. Have you seen it? Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah, it's okay now. So you see structure of financial market now? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. So, so that is how pictorially the financial market is looking. And you see that at the bottom left corner, there's public accounting firm. Now, the reason why we have put this here is that in the midst of all this, you need somebody who is independent. So you notice that this is this this circle is outside the box. Somebody who is independent of all these parties to cross-check what is happening here and give some form of assurance to the participants in the markets. So that is why we know that what accounting firms do, they will audit the books of uh, the entities that are operating the market to check that what they are they are they are showing to the market is it reflects what is in the market, what we call they call the true and fair view. The reason is that the, the company, the corporation that will come to the market to come and look for funding will present some form of financials. And the question is, how comfortable are you that the financials that are being presented to you is correct or it reflects the true and fair view of what transpires in their company? That is how come we have accounting firms or public accounting firms, independent of these people, checking their books and providing some form of assurance uh, to ensure that the integrity of the information that is the basis on which transactions happen in the financial markets is, 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 can be vouched for. Now let's let's continue. Uh, so when we come to the financial market, we have participants, people who play in the financial market. Participants. So who are some of the people who play in the financial market? We have investors. If you talk about investors, they, investors they can be retail or institutional. Retail are individuals like yourself, myself, any individual that that, that has enough money to be able to invest. And and Sophia talked. I think talked about investors. She was basic. She was basically admonishing us to try to to cultivate the habit of investing right when we are young to we start work and so on. So, as individuals, as students, as whoever you are, you you can also play in the financial market. And 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 normally there are companies that have that will limit uh, how much they will take from you to invest from you because of maybe cost benefit analysis. So generally, most companies will look at the people we call the high network individuals basically saying that they are they are willing to deal with people who have a certain threshold of wealth so some companies will say that if you're an individual want to invest with us you want us to manage your money for you we will ask that you have one million cds two hundred thousand five hundred thousand so on so basically by doing so they cut out some of the investors but luckily there are other ways that irrespective of the quantum of money you have you can also play in the financial market and if you remember, Sophia talked about collective investment schemes or mutual funds and uh, unit trust. These are vehicles that are available on the financial market to allow people with small monies to also participate in the market and also be able to receive the same professional services that ordinarily their, their, their money will not be able to allow them to do. So uh, there are avenues for all these people, the mutual funds and the, and and. and and unit trusts are available for people who want to invest. So all these people fall under investors, under retail. Oh. Then we have the institutional, okay? The institutional companies also come into the market. Also, are they also in the market uh, investing? If you look at my list there, you see mutual funds, pension funds, private equity firms, venture capital funds, seed and angel investors. All these are institutions that also invest in the market. So when you the individual, you take your money to a mutual fund, all the individuals, your monies are put together, let's say 100, 200 people, your monies are put together, it becomes a reasonable amount for the mutual fund on its own to stand on its legs to also come to the financial market to play, to buy bonds, buy shares, 
buy commercial PPS, buy fixed deposit to trade. Similarly, pension funds also do see, and, and to, make, to make it relatable, you can think of SNIT. Uh, SNIT invests a chunk of the pension in this country, where every month people who work by law, a certain amount of money uh, is deducted from their money and sent to SNIT to manage. That money that SNIT controls is also invested in our capital markets. So when SNIT collects those monies from workers, they don't put it in a bank account. They also invest it. So they'll come to the capital market uh, to or financial market to invest in shares, bonds, fixed deposits, and so on and so forth. So pension funds are also huge uh, participants in the in the in the financial markets. They have private equity firms uh, that also invest in in, 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 the, in the financial markets. We have venture capital basically providing funding for for startups. And, and so on and we have the angel and seed investors uh, basically people who are looking for good ideas to to put patient capital in so apart from these investors we also have corporations also playing big in the in the financial markets so a corporation can either be public or private when we say a corporation is public like what we are saying is that um, the number of the number of the corporation securities are held by a number of people in the financial market. It's not closely held. So I think if you check the Companies Act, I think that if uh, you are private, you there's a limit on the number of shareholders you can have. However, if you are public, uh, you you basically sell. into the, the whole public who, who made a certain conditions for, for instance who who are 18 years and above and of us and all that so public means that it's widely held and traded on the exchange okay so for instance, exchange and their shares are traded on the, that's why we say they are public and by the way closure to the people who have interest in their company so either by way of debt or equity a company uh, may have uh, public responsibilities then we have private companies also playing on the market so it could be a company that is held by just one individual not a public one like i just described one individual or two companies but they also come and play on the market they can come to uh, the market to come and raise funds or come and uh, come and buy investment in the capital market so for instance shell the company shell or the company shell that we all know that is now called vivo uh, it's not listed on the ghana stock exchange but their shares are traded on 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 on, on in private so if you if you if you speak to stock brokers they can they can look for the shares for you it is not on the ghana stock exchange so it means that there has to be somebody who is willing to sell the shares is holding and come to speak to the broker then the broker will look for somebody who is also willing to buy and then they trade all these corporations are playing on the market either they are coming for money or they are coming to invest in the financial market so shell can say that we have so much cash sitting in our bank account let's go and buy treasury bills on the capital market to make some interest on our cash so that is they coming to invest or put cash into the financial market or they can say that if you look at our working capital we need one million uh, in the next two months, and so let's go to the financial market to raise one million, either through a commercial paper or some form of arrangement. And so that will be a case where Shell is coming to look for money from the financial market. So these all these people are players, either public companies or private companies, playing on the market. So let's look at um, classifications, uh, financial market sub classification. The financial markets have um, sub-segments or classifications that we need to understand as we go along. So, that's the, that's the, The financial markets. The first form of classification we want to look at is 
the money market and the capital market are market. So when we say money market, what do we mean? Any security that is that has one yet market. Okay. So for instance, uh, 90 commercial papers. Commercial papers are normal that, that side. And then we have fixed deposits, core deposits. And then other important thing we also need to know this cash is considered as money market security. So basically, we say that instruments on the money market are liquid. When we say uh, an asset or financial asset is liquid, what it means is that it can easily be converted to cash without a significant uh, fall in the value of, of the asset or without a significant discount on it. So if you hear money market, basically uh, it's a market where security that has up to one year to mature uh, are, are traded. And uh, there are a lot of players in this market. It's really big. Uh, a lot of the banks, this is where they play. A lot of oil companies, this is where they play because it is short term and it, it, if you need to turn around your money quickly this is where you come um the money here is not patient uh, it, it has to be it has to move very quickly as you go to capital market you you understand that capital market is a patient side of the market so so the capital market is like the flip side of of the money market where securities with a tenor above one year are traded so if somebody wants to issue a security or want to buy a security that is more than one year, it has one more than one year to mature, they are coming into the capital market. So generally, medium to long term note bonds, shares, the popular shares that you know about, uh, they play in the capital market. So uh, the stock exchange is under the capital market in that regard. Okay. Stock exchange. So for Ghana, for instance, the Ghana stock exchange, the Ghana fixed income market are are all examples of markets that is facilitating uh, the capital market process. So when we pick the money market, when we pick the money market, who are some of the players in the in the money market or participants in the money market? So remember that we have said that in the money market, securities there are short term, very liquid securities. So the central bank or the Bank of Ghana plays in the money markets. Um, they use the money market to manage liquidity through the issuance of uh, short dated instruments and they, they do this on behalf of the government of Ghana and some of the time on, in, on their own behalf. As we go along, I'll show you a chart of uh, the, the, the weekly tender, tender that comes on the weekly auctions. Commercial banks too are huge players in the money market uh, side. Remember that when you, you go to the bank and you deposit your money with the bank, uh, in a current account, you don't tell them when you come for it, but anytime you come, they should be able to supply the money. Now, banks are supposed to be making profit from turning around the money you, you, you place with them. So if you go and put 2000 in the bank, banks turn it around to make money. That's how banks make profit. When I say turn it around, it means that they invest it. But the question is, how are you going to invest somebody's money when you don't know when the person will come for the money? So that's what banks do. They plan. The, the data that they have, they can look at uh, maybe the last three years and see the average uh, for, for every CD of deposit that is done. They look at the average withdrawals in 10, three, three months, one month, six months to determine that, okay, if somebody brings one uh, 1,000, it is likely that in three months we withdraw only 500. So uh, we have the liberty to be able to uh, reinvest the remaining 500 in the six year paper. This is the kind of thing banks do. But because you can count, you can call on them at any time and for your money, when they are investing, they have to invest very short term. They invest in one month, two months, three months, four months, six months investment so that uh, it is very liquid. They can fall on it quickly to, to generate uh, the liquidity that they need for you if you can. So that's why banks use this market segment very, very well. Uh, the other thing is that banks are supposed to keep some prudential ratios with the central bank, with the Bank of Ghana. Um, so for every money deposited with banks, they're supposed to keep some, some percentage uh, uh, with the Bank of Ghana as reserves. So what they do is that every day, at the end of every day, at the end of every month, they are always checking their ratios to make sure that they have not breached it. They have that liquidity there. If the bank notices that they are going to breach the Bank of Ghana's prudential ratios, what they do is that they, they operate in this money market. They borrow from other banks 
to shore up their liquidity to be able to meet it. Or they do some of the time things what they call repo, or repo is the is, is means that repurchase. Um, so they, they sell a security to uh, another bank with the agreement that they will buy it back. So if a bank is supposed to keep a minimum uh, cash balance of let's say one million, and by close of D, they, they they see that they have nine hundred thousand. The the shortfall of hundred thousand, they need to borrow it in the interbank market to make up for the difference. What they will do is a typically bank will do is to borrow it and pay interest on it, or they can also give a security that they have. So if they have a three month security, a three month treasury bill, they can give it to another bank. And the bank will in exchange give them cash, and then agree with the bank that we will bring the money in three days and take our security back. Those are the repos that banks do, or in a bid to manage liquidity. So the money market side of the market is very big for commercial banks. And the, the reason that they operate there, I've explained that because they need cash quickly. Whenever they need cash, those are the segments of the market you can follow. And then we have corporate and companies also operating in this money market segment. Um, they use it to one source for short-term funding to support their working capital and increase liquidity, and also to invest to optimize their liquidity. So. Uh, if you are a finance manager of a company and your company needs money to buy raw materials in two months, in one month, this is the market you go. You don't go to the capital market. So you go to this market, you go and raise funds through uh, commercial paper. You issue it and you promise to pay back in three months with interest. Or you can also uh, go to a bank and go and borrow short-term loan to do this. These are all done in the in the money market. Or you are a finance manager this time around, you, you, you don't need money, but you have excess money sitting in your bank account. Instead of the money sitting idle, you have done your cash flow analysis, you have done your cash flow forecast, and you know that the money in your account, you are not going to need it in six months or three months. The excess money, you can decide to buy a 91-day T-bills, a 182-day T-bills to make sure that you optimize the cash so that you make some interest on your cash without um without the money sitting idle in your in your bank account so companies and corporate also operate uh, really in this market uh, companies like oil oil companies for instance especially those ones that import cook oil they are big in this market they're always looking for the liquidity uh, and so they are always big in, in this kind of market and then we have the institutional investors like pension funds insurance companies and fund managers so pension funds also are also big in this market they, they come here to invest, mainly invest. So uh, pension funds, insurance companies, and farm managers also need a portion of the money they are managing to be liquid. Because if you are managing a mutual fund, let's say the EDC Ghana uh, fixed income fund, um, the monies have been given to you to invest, but a portion of the money should be invested such that when people come and they want to do withdrawals, you can easily pay them. And that kind of money, you don't invest it in a, in a 10 year or five year or three year uh, bond. You invest it in a 91 day, 182 day or one year uh, instrument so that the liquidity is always there. Insurance companies, the same. When you, you buy an insurance policy and you pay premium, the expectation is that when the insured event crystallizes, uh, the insurance company is supposed to indemnify you or pay you. So insurance companies, when they take the monies from you in a form of premium, it doesn't sit in the account, they invest it. And, and by their asset allocation structure, what they do is that they invest a significant part of their money in short-term instrument. It means that money market and a very small portion is the life companies that invest long in, in the bonds. So that when there's an accident and you come to them for payment, there'll be money to pay. So the insurance companies are also big in this uh, market. So on this screen, I am showing you, on this screen, I'm showing you um, notice to banks and public notice, Bank of Ghana's government of Ghana security. So this is how the Bank of Ghana has been coming to, to sell securities, basically. So you will see that at the extreme left, you see the security. If you see ICN, ICN means international securities identification number. And then the securities, 91 day, 182 day, 364. Forget about the last column, which is a five year. 
what it means that that week, that week, the government of Ghana also issued a five year, so they added it. But this is how it is. Habits attended, bits accepted, range of uh, bits, and so on. How this works is that the Bank of Ghana, on behalf of the government of Ghana, will come and sell uh, these securities 91 day, three months, six months, and one year bills. And these bills are sold at a discount. So, in other words, um, you, you invest a certain money, and then when it matures, they give you a certain that's your money plus the interest. They don't pay interest before maturity. So, when we say a paper is traded at a discount, that's what it means. It means that they don't pay you any interest before maturity. Before maturity. So, if you buy a 91 day T bills, you you can you can pay let's say 900 and then when it matures they give you 1000 the same for the six months and the one year and how this is done is that uh, unlike bonds they use the weighted average rate to decide um, the, the 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 rate that they are using so people bid so the government will come and say we need 1 billion uh, in the form of 182 day 91 day interest for the bills and then the banks and all the market participants who are interested in buying the bills will go and bid. So they go and say, okay, I want to buy 50 million at 12%. This one say, I want to buy 50 million at 12.1. This one say, I want to buy uh, 30 million at 11.9. They don't give a rate. You come and bid based on previous auctions. You have an idea where the, the range is. And then the Bank of Ghana will look at all the bids. So Joshua comes to bid 30. Uh, Sophia bids 50 and then uh, Kofi bids 70 at their various rates. They look at all the rates because the government is the one borrowing the money. Of course, they are looking for lower rates. So when they are selecting, they will select the ones with the lower rate first. So whoever bid at a lower rate will be picked so they can have the full size of what they want to buy. Then they move on to the next low, uh, the, less, the next low, then the next, the next to the last one. If your bid, the rate at which you want to give the money to the government is so high, you may not, you may end up not getting it. Uh, and so what it means is that by the time they finish picking the bids, they would have picked bids from different people at different rates. Okay. However, so how they determine the closing bid for the for the auction is that they find their weighted average rate. And and I since I have students on this call. I believe you know how to do weighted average. You you use the the value that they use to bid as the weight in determining the uh, the weighted average rate. So if Joshua bid at ten and he bid thirty overall, let's say hundred, Joshua bid at a bit thirty at ten, uh, Sophia bid uh, fifty at eleven, and Kofi bid twenty at uh, twenty at twelve. They, they, they obviously they will pick the lowest one first. So Joshua, Sophia before Kofi. So they, if they are determining the rate, it will be 10% uh, out, 10% multiplied by the weight of by the weight of Joshua. And because Joshua was 30, 30 over 100 is 30%. So 0.3 or times the weight in that order, and they, they get the average weight, average rate. That's how they do the auction for for the short term papers. When you buy, when it matures, they pay to you. Almost every week uh, they come to do this, except that every almost every week you have the 91 day, 182 day, and then I think once a month you you get the 364 or twice a month you get the 364 coming through as well, and then to determine the final rate. As we go along, we look at bonds. We look at so you see that here, the rate that is used or the final rate is weighted average. Okay. As we go along, we notice that for bonds, we have what we call a single clearing. 